Welcome to our history show on Uxbridge FM, and we're very pleased to welcome our guest today, local historian Ken Pierce. Hello, Ken. Hello. Now, um, you're going to do a talk for us today on the Fascinage family, is that right? That's correct, yes. Great. Now, we're not going to tell anybody how old you are. It's a secret. But uh, <laughs> you made it up our stairs, which is great. <laughs> and uh, all right, let's, let's learn about the Kate, Kate's, Kate's family, the Fastnage family, when you're ready. Right, thank you. Well, brothers Daniel and Benjamin Fastnage came to Uxbridge in the late 18th century from Great Missenden. The family are based in the Chilterns, really, to even still today, but their story can be traced back to the 12th century. Benjamin Fastnage was a builder, and he soon set up business in Uxbridge, the usual date given is 1796, and it eventually became the largest building firm in the area throughout the Victorian period. One of um, the e earliest projects was Rockingham Bridge, over the River Frays, completed in 1808. It has been widened since, but basically the original bridge is still there. Benjamin had no children, so the firm was eventually taken over by his nephew James about 1820, who was then joined by his son, William. Their major product, project was undoubtedly St Andrew's Church. Population growth between Hillingdon and Uxbridge meant the need for a new parish and a new church. The architect Sir Gilbert Scott was employed and Fastnage were given the contract to build the church. And of course it involved that 180 foot spire. The spire was built section by section in Fastnage's yard and large donations from local people meant that the church could be completely built in one go. It was consecrated by the Bishop of London in 1866. William himself was involved in many local activities. He was trustee of the local charities and a supporter of Uxbridge Football Club. In, 19, in 1888, he purchased the public rooms. There was no town hall in Uxbridge, but this building at the junction of High Street and Vine Street, was opened in 1836, paid for by four local businessmen. Meetings of all kinds were held there, concerts, plays and so forth. And as a builder, of course, William, the owner, was able to keep it in excellent condition. William was also a devout member of the St Andrew's Congregation, and when he died in 1902, a chancel screen was subsequently created there in his memory. William's son, William Brown Fastnage, then took control of the firm, but he sold out about 1913. The firm continued, but there was no longer any Fastnage family connection. One of William's sons... Edward Jones Fastnage did not enter the building trade, but instead became a successful solicitor with offices in London and Uxbridge. He was also known as Sidney, and in his youth he wanted to marry a lady called Kate Canham, but his mother didn't like her, and she made her opposition very clear. So his mother, Elizabeth, um, was opposed, and they decided to wait until she died. His mother, Elizabeth, eventually died in 1917, and they married very soon after. But by that time, Sidney was 59 and Kate was 54. Would anybody wait that long today? The couple lived in the house The Cedars in the High Street, but alas, Sidney died after only four years of marriage. In his memory, Kate gave the town six acres of land to the west of the River Frays. Uxbridge Council added adjacent land which they already owned. And so the Fastnage Recreation Ground came into being and was opened to the public in 1926. 
At the opening ceremony, Kate formally opened the gate with a silver key. Also in the scheme was the Fastenage Bowls Club. Kate was made life president and each year she opened their season by bowling the first wood. Kate died in 1950, leaving her house and garden to the townspeople. She wished her home to become a rest centre or a library, but it proved totally unsuitable for those purposes. Instead, a building was erected in the garden, the Fastnage Memorial Hall, for the use of elderly people, providing lunches and a place for meetings. The garden was used by the public, but not long afterwards, a relief road project to avoid a congested high street came into being. The council therefore gave itself permission to build the new road and a roundabout on most of Kate's garden. Management of the Fashionage bequest took a long time to be properly organised and it wasn't until 1994 that a proper charitable trust was established. More recently, the trustees have financed the building of a residential tower block called Panorama on what was part of Kate's garden. The ground floor has become the new Fastnage Hall. In 2013, it was revealed that Kate's grave in Hillingdon Cemetery was in a dilapidated condition. So Crescent Building Supplies of Hillingdon generously paid for the restoration of the memorial. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is a glimpse of the Fastnage family story in Uxbridge. Well, thank you very much, Ken. That's uh, quite an enlightening, uh, <laughs> some knowledge you've got there. I wonder if uh, what Kate's feeling would have been, were she here now and she'd seen the dual carriageway through the, <laughs> the back garden? Yes, it doesn't bear thinking about. <laughs> I call it civic vandalism. <laughs> oh, well. Right, thank you very much, and we'll have another talk shortly.